Is it possible to build a multi-million dollar coaching business without a big name or a big list or big box? Can you take your passion, turn it into profits, create your dream life, and help the people that God has called you to reach? The good news is absolutely, and today we're going to show you how. I'm Tamara Lowe, founder of Kingdom Builders Academy. I built a multi-million dollar coaching empire from the ground up, and I've taught thousands of people how to do it too. If you're tired of spinning your wheels trying to get traction, well, buckle up, baby. We're gonna get you out of that rut. All right, well, Coach Tam, we love it. We're teed up for this episode of the Kingdom Builders Academy podcast how we built a multi-million dollar coaching empire. So we're excited to dive into the backstory, the wins and lessons learned along the way. So Coach Tam, do you want to kick us off? I know you've got just the most incredible background and resume that led you to the visionary start of Kingdom Builders Academy. Do you want to kick us off? Sure can. I, I don't know that I really feel that visionary. I feel like that, honestly, I listen to the Lord. That's the truth of the matter. And the the whole point of this podcast, I don't really think it's about us building a multi-million dollar coaching empire. It's about how you guys can do your dream, how you can do the thing that God has called you to do. So I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory so that you know what I had to build on. But I promise you that everybody tuning into the podcast today, you guys have a backstory that God has strategically aligned in your storyline to create the foundation that you need for what he has called you to do. So everything that has happened to you, you know, Zach, I was thinking today, this is a little bit off topic, but maybe not, is that I've been held at gunpoint by four different men and three of those four men held you at gunpoint too. And I don't think that that is a coincidence. I think that hell has a periscope. I think hell sees potential on people. And the things that you've been through, the trials that you've endured, the things that you've survived are all part of your backstory that enable you then to, as the scriptures say, that the God of all comfort who comforts us enables us to comfort others in their trials. Yeah. And so a little bit of my backstory, you guys probably know that I started Get Motivated Seminars when I was in my early 20s. And, and I grew that, that business. Uh, that one was uh, also a multi, multi-million dollar speaking business. And I grew that for many decades and worked with the greatest leaders and achievers. If you went back even further... And this is this is kind of shocking and scary to me, but I've been a public speaker for over 50 years. Wow. I, I, I don't, you know, I was thinking this morning that I think I think 60, because I'm turning 60 next year. Um, I think that 60 is the new 40. And I think that 40 is the new 30. Come on. But 30, Zach, 30 is still 30. <laughs> 30 is 30. Oh, yeah. well, man. I was yeah. hoping you were going to say 40 was the new 20. I was really with you doubling down. Well, there. When I look at you, you're, you're 30. turning 40 and you look 20. No, I think this, I think, I think if you look nice and you are happy and healthy, I think, I think age is a blessing. I really do. Um, somebody says in the chat, can 70 be the new 50? Sure. Yes, we're giving yes, you that. Can. We are Asking giving you, you well that. received. My mom, when I was little, used to say, do this when I was little. So Wait, there would be no wobble. There are listeners who can't see what this is. What oh, you, you have to, you take your, you take your two, your two fingers, your pointer finger and your middle finger, and you put them together like you're directing a plane and then you pat under your chin. And then. Can oh, you gosh. No, we can't even translate You've been training. that for our listeners. But your mom, your time. mom looks really good, so maybe it works. I maybe think it works. Starting a you know finger flicking chin thing. All right, going back a little further, um, I was I was a paid public speaker from the age of four. I had this um, gift. I was kind of a child prodigy. I learned how to read very young and. My parents discovered accidentally that I had a phonographic memory, not a photographic memory, but a phonographic memory. So I could remember and quote verbatim everything that I heard. 
And my parents used to love to go to back in the day, they had PMA, positive mental attitude rallies. And this was where the motivational speakers of the day really began to emerge, the Zig Ziglers and Jim Rohns and, and Norman Vincent Peale. And, and they would take me to these things with them as I was, I was just a little girl. And one day they found me doing a message that I had heard at one of these rallies and they took me and put me on the speaking circuit. So they monetized my, my gift, even as a as a little girl, and little did I know that that I would actually end up in in the public speaking industry. So from from the time that that I was um, really in my late teens, early twenties, I felt very called to ministry. I felt called to speaking, and I felt called to something that there was not a name for at the time, which we now call marketplace ministry. Mm-hmm. And this is sharing your faith in a bi- in a business context. And so I started Get Motivated Seminars, grew that business for for decades, and had the awesome opportunity to share my faith with millions of people and had so many awesome experiences. But then... And Coach Tam, actually, before before we keep moving, because I know we're, we're trying to pack in a lot decades, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I want to want to just jump into that marketplace ministry, because a lot of people here listening want to start businesses you know, want to make a great impact and a great income. And there's different ways to do that. Like one way is what we do with Kingdom Builders Academy. We're literally serving and equipping Christians, right? It's a a kind of a Christian business for Christians, but you can also do something different, which is what you did with Get Motivated Seminars, which is what we've kind of called a Trojan horse business, where you come in with more of a secular message. We're just a business seminar for everybody. But within that, on the back end of that, at the end of every event with 10, 20, 30,000 people that came just for like motivation and business knowledge, you shared the gospel and had a kind of a Trojan horse approach where you come in with, you know, come get business skills, come get motivated, come get equipped. And it's for everybody. We're not just serving Christians, but you use that as a platform for evangelism. And that's just a kind of two ways to do it, right? If you want to have a great business, but you also want to advance the kingdom, you see both of those models, Get Motivated Seminars was kind of a secular business with a Trojan horse, like evangelism message right. on the inside, or Kingdom oh. Builders Academy is more of the targeted Christian um, business. Yeah. So I'll just hop in on that and just say that if you're going to do that Trojan horse approach, I would recommend that you make the spiritual portion of it optional. So you're never really shoving something down people's throats or they're saying, oh, hey, I didn't pay for this. Give them everything that they paid for and then make that portion a bonus. And that's what I did. I would, in in the context of these big seminars, I would, I would speak before a break and then I would say, hey, listen, we're getting ready to take a break. And for those of you who want to stay an extra 10 minutes, I'm going to do a little a segment that I call the dynamics of faith. And this is really one of the most powerful things that you're going to hear today. We'd love to have you stay for it. If you're not interested in spiritual things, that's fine. You can get up, make your way out, take a little bit longer of a break. And then I would go into it, but really nobody would move. You might see maybe 10 people in an audience of 10, 15, 20,000 get up and leave. And they would give me a standing ovation afterwards. I would share my, my experience with them of faith and I would even lead them in a prayer. To... And she would rap. That and I... was my. <laughs> and I, was, I did. I did. I was, I was. I was kind of hoping you could do a little. I. You know what? I was actually trying to remember it right now. Lord Jesus. To be a survivor in this amazing race with a need for speed. For speed, you're going to need God. God's grace. Come on, help me out. Every <laughs> Dixie Dixie breath did. like housewives. Watching days of our lives, you can't cope without hope, and that's not on a soap. If you look into Oprah or Dr. Phil, you can shop nonstop or pop a pill, but the void won't fill and the pain won't kill till you love the one that hung on the hill. Kicking back in your lazy boy easy chair, watching who wants to be a millionaire. Nah, you're not going to find it there. No American Idol or Council Tribal has a final answer that'll satisfy you, mm-hmm. and so on. So, but you know, that kind of bypasses the walls that people put up, right? Okay, so then, then about, I don't know, 15 years ago, I went through this really horrible, tragic experience that I never saw coming. After 23 years of marriage, I ended up going through a really devastating, brutal, brutal divorce. And 
in that, in that, I call it a Job experience because I really lost everything. I lost my ministry. I lost my reputation. I lost my marriage. I lost my family. I lost my health. I lost my income. I just about lost my mind. Thank God I didn't lose my faith. That was the one thing I did have still intact. But I mean, it was, it was devastating. And in that place, I remember saying to the Lord, you know, I've got $6,000 of cash, which represents one month of oxygen for me. And then I'm not, I'm not going to have anything. I'll pay my bills and then I'll have nothing next month. I have no income. What am I going to do? And I was on my knees. I was over a million dollars in debt. It was a disaster. And God spoke to me and he said, I want you to equip the next generation of emerging Christian leaders. I want you to teach speakers the things that you have learned as a speaker. I want you to teach Christian writers the things that you know about being a best-selling author. I want you to mentor my people and help make it easier for them. And when God spoke that to me, um, I remember thinking, dear God, why would you choose me at this time? And then, then a woman's face fat flashed before my eyes. Now, this was a woman that I had seen um, maybe three years ago. I hadn't even spoken two words to her. She was a panelist at a conference that I was speaking at. So we were panelists together. I didn't even know her name. But God said to me, I want you to go to her seminar and look at her model. I couldn't even remember her name. I had to get on Google. I found her. Sure enough, she was doing a seminar in Las Vegas. The tickets were $3,000 between airfare, transportation, hotel, <clears throat> food, the tickets. It was going to take all $6,000 that I had. And here's the kicker. It was on public speaking. I mean, I've been a public speaker since I was four years old. I forgot more about public speaking than this woman ever knew, but God did not call me to go for her content. He said, go and look at her model. Go and look mm -hmm. at her model. Now, here's a teaching moment, okay? Don't try and make up your own model. Follow a model that's already proven. Follow a model that works, and it works. You know it works because other people are using it successfully, right? So I thought, well... In one month, I'll be out of oxygen. I'm going to spend this money either way. I might as well do what God told me to do. So I went to the, I went to the conference. I spent the $6,000. I, I didn't learn anything that I didn't know about public speaking, but that's not why I was sent there. I was sent to look at the model. And if I had not gone and seen that, we would not be having this conversation today. Mm -hmm. Because when I looked at her model, I said, I can do this. And you know what? I think I can even do it better. I think mm -hmm. I can even do it better. And she was doing a great job of it, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. so here's a teachable moment for you is invest, invest in yourself, follow a proven pattern, follow a proven pattern. And so the next thing I did was I put together an offer. I thought, okay, let's just test this thing see if it has legs, okay? See if people actually want this. So my friend Lance Wall now, he calls me up. He said, Tamara, I heard about the crisis that you're in right now. What are you going to do next? And I said, well, I said, you know, I quit. I, I tendered my letter of resignation to God. I, I literally wrote a letter of resignation to mm -hmm. God. And I said, I'm done. I'm done with ministry. I'm done with speaking. I've been fruitful and multiplied. I've done it all. I'm not gonna do anything else. I quit. And, and he laughed and he said, that's not the will of God for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, apparently not because he's given me a vision to equip Christian speakers and coaches and authors and teach them the things that I've learned over decades. And he said, great, come and speak for me in three weeks. And I said, Lance, I am not at all ready to do this. And he said, no, he's very persuasive. Three weeks later, I'm in Dallas, Texas. I'm speaking before a hundred of his people at a conference. And I offered a $2,000 package. I didn't know if anybody would sign up. I hadn't even created it yet. And everybody got up, went to the back of the room and signed up for it. Now I had $100,000 in cash and nothing will motivate you more than having people's money and they're expecting something from you. And so I said, we're going to start in two weeks. And in two weeks time, I had developed two modules, two video modules and I loaded those up to a portal. I got people on coaching calls, got them on group coaching. 
And that's how we kind of started. And, and so here's another teachable moment for you. Another teachable moment for you is this. You've got to produce an offer that people really want, mm -hmm. not something you think they want. And you don't want to build it out and spend a lot of time and money creating something. And you don't even know how to sell it. You don't even sell it. Okay. So for over 30 years, I've done that. Every book, every product, anything that I've ever created, any coaching program. Pick up my dog, Chewy. This is my sidekick today. He's hearing <laughs> some noises, getting a little barky. So, oh, that's lovely. There's a there's doorbell ringing during the podcast. Because I can't hear put, it. We I couldn't hear put, Chewy. We couldn't hear the no, doorbell. It's okay. It's all right. So anyway, yeah, I've everything I've created over the past 30 years, I've done it by selling it first to see, is it going to sell? And if it's going to sell, then I'll create it. So that way you're not spending a lot of time and money creating something that you don't even know how to sell. Yeah, love it. And that's what we've been seeing, I think, um, on both counts, right? Because that's obviously exactly what we teach was, was that lesson that you learned and, and worked for you. And that's exactly what we're seeing from so many of our members right now. I know just this week, we've seen that kind of testimony of not only I got my first clients, I'm really excited, but... Now I'm really like motivated to build the thing. I know so many people sit on their dreams, sit on their ideas. I got this book. I got this course. I got this business idea, but nothing will be like double beneficial, like making that offer and getting paying clients. Cause not only do you have that cash in hand and proof of concept that's like really validating and exciting, but you've also now got real incentive and urgency to actually produce the thing. And instead of it sitting on the shelf or in the back of your mind for years on end, now you've actually got to create it. Right. So and you've actually got paying clients too. And the benefit of that is that if you create a program without paying clients, you're creating the wrong program. You're answering questions that they don't have. They've got questions that you don't even know what they are, but they're going to ask you. They're going to ask you, and then you can develop your product to answer those questions. So it's really a brilliant way of going about it. And I know it's kind of counterintuitive. If you do the kind of conventional wisdom and you're getting out there networking and you're doing business cards and you're putting up a website and you say, I'm a speaker, you write a book, you think people are going to buy it because you wrote it. You think people are going to book you to speak because you say you're a speaker. You're going to be you're going to be sorely disappointed, my friend, because it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You know, actually, I want to bring Honey, my wonderful wife, Coach Sunny Bunny. Yes. I want to circle back to, to one thing, Coach Tam, you brought up at the beginning, which was about looking back at your life. So this was about like 12 years ago or something that, you know, you started Kingdom Builders out of this place of my life has fallen apart. You know, I've, I've had some good things happen and I've had some bad things happen. And Coach Jillian, you have given what I think is the best definition of purpose that I've heard. You say that your purpose is your pain wrapped in redemption on a mission. And isn't that kind of what you found in working with hundreds of our members that like okay. so many businesses and ministries and brands are birthed mm -hmm. out of that place of, your purpose being your pain wrapped in redemption and now on a mission to go out and help people who want to learn the things that you've learned, that want to overcome the things that you've overcome. Is this me? Is, I'm yeah. A, a, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I think that it's the case for probably every person, almost every person who's even in the inner circle you know, that's, that's what is, you know, the composition of our community is that your place of pain, your, whether it's the loss of your spouse or the loss of your health or the loss of a child, or it might have been a struggle with weight or your business felt, whatever it was, like wherever it all fell apart is where it all began, really. Like that is really the starting point for the place that God wants to do that kind of, you know, we were, uh, uh, Coach Tam was talking about Lance Wall now. He has this terminology that he uses called the dipsy doodle, where it's like a, a fighter, a fighter jet will kind of drop back before it, it like catapults and takes off. And I think that so many people don't realize that in that moment, that's really where they're being made. That's where you're being made. Like, you know, when your mom, 
you know, lost everything. And it was very interesting for me, actually, because I remember meeting your mom. I remember um, I was actually putting on live events for Dr. Lance Wall now, and your mom was invited to be a keynote speaker. And I remember meeting her and she had this like glorious curly hair, uh, but she was mm-hmm. the most like the most energetic, the most entertaining, the most anointed speaker that we had, right? I mean, she was just phenomenal. And I was 22 and I remember her saying, oh, would you be willing to come with me on a missions trip? It was a missions trip. And um, for whatever reason, that missions trip fell through. But then I remember being at work. I lived in Bakersfield, California. I worked for a Remax. I was the general manager. And I remember she called and she said, and I didn't even know what she did. Okay. I did not know. And she said, well, you know, we we travel and we put on these um, like motivational business seminars um, in arenas. And I think that you would make a great MC. I didn't, you know, I thought, I didn't know what. So I ended up saying, okay, let me come and see what we're talking about. I, I, my butt cheeks were so tight. I'm just telling you, I was so you couldn't have gotten dental floss between my butt cheeks when I, oh, I thought, no, I, okay. we're with the family show and Sonny, but I, I thought that she meant like a couple hundred people. Okay. I didn't understand that it was like 20,000 people. Okay. Okay. But, but let and, me, let me just stop you there. Okay. Because you know, when people hear that, okay. Growing a hundred million dollar business, this big thing, Kingdom Builders Academy has turned out to be, you have to understand it's the result of faithfulness day after day after day. It's a result of being so honed in on the thing that God has called you to do that you're willing to set aside your discouragement. You're going to take up your cross for the sake of the crown. You're going to do the thing that God has called you to do even when your emotions are not cooperating with you. Right. Well, and even, I was even going to say, you know, I remember you saying this story that when Get Motivated started, that it was like 20 people in a room before it was 20,000. It was 20 people in a room and that you guys had highs and lows over the course of 30 plus years as a hundred million dollar business. But it was interesting for me, you know, Zach, because I got to see your mom work with um, nonprofits that, you know, she would bring in and they would be able to, you know, what I love is that God will allow you to come to a place where you can also open the door for other people. So I saw your mom do that with Get Motivated and bringing in, uh, what was it? What was it? Vision, children of vision. We have visions. You're a vision. It was world vision. It was world World vision. So they told me, you know, I said, I'll, I wrote this book and I'll give you guys the book. I'll, I'll organize pastors meetings. And so we went everywhere we went. We, we got together hundreds of pastors. Usually it was like the first non-denominational, denominationally integrated pastors meetings that the cities had ever seen. Most of, most of the cities, it's unfortunate in the U.S. that it's like that in other countries. I know that there's a lot more cross-pollination between pastors and denominations, but, but we would have hundreds of pastors and they said, you know what? You have outsold Max Lucado and John Maxwell. You're our, you're our number one um, child, I don't know, emissary, I don't know. That, that we got more people to sign up and sponsor children and pastors opened their doors and brought world vision in. So that was, that was really cool too. All of that, you know, you look at people's successes and, and it's easy to be intimidated by it. But the point of this broadcast is you can do it. You can start where you're at. You can use your backstory. I mean, we've had, we have people in our coaching program that have the craziest backgrounds. Like Zach just sent me a a letter the other day from somebody who is currently in our program who was a space shuttle engineer. Uh, We have somebody in our program who, um, well, so much for the family show. I hope, I hope the children are out of the room. The, the, The guy breeds cattle and he is, he produces burgers. No, he produces milk for babies, superior bull sperm. Okay. He's presented. Yes. Oh my gosh. And and, and, no, but listen, no, it's a business. It's a real thing. 
I'm so, doing what? What do you do with that? Get well, don't I don't know. You haven't watched Yellowstone. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. It's a big deal to to produce these superior cows and bulls. Folks, folks, folks. No, it's a multi, multi million dollar business, right? No, no. Whatever your backstory is, my point is, my point, and I do have one is that whatever your backstory is, you can use that. You can package your experience, your life story, your overcomer strategies, and, and people will pay you to help them get past the hurdles that they have in their oh. lives. Oh my gosh. Okay, but let me just say this really quick because I wanted to say this thing. So I watched Coach Tam, this $100 million business, doing all the things, opening doors for people, sharing her faith in the most incredible way, millions of people getting to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then I got to see her lose everything. You got a front I, row seat to my disaster. Oh, I did. I had a front row seat. And I remember when it was like, there, like I remember you saying like, you hadn't bought anything. In like a year, like you had. Oh, no, bought. no, it, it it was like five years. There were five years where, where you I, didn't you I yeah. literally did not buy anything. Yeah. Like you lost for, everything, zero. everything, everything. And then every can I tell this story? Yeah, tell then, it. Then. um, So I did what God told me to do. People bought it. People wanted it. I just started adding clients. And for for a number of years, I only had 12 clients. I was like, I'm happy. You know, I'm making a six figure income. I've got 12 clients. Jesus had 12. I'm fine with 12. But everybody kept saying, like, we're getting such great results. My brother wants to join the group. My friend wants to join the group. I'd say, no, no, we're only we're only doing 12. That's it. And after a while, I couldn't resist the Holy Spirit. So we began to, to open it up to other people. But, but I remember uh, after five years, I, was, I did this thing. I went to this Pritikin Center. I thought it was going to be like a spa. I was, I was feeling like I need a little break. I'm sure there's some nice spas in Florida. I don't want to get on an airplane. So I signed up. I go to this Pritikin Center. I thought I was going to eat little spa meals. I was going to get massages. It was camp deprivation. I mean, they take you off of caffeine. They take you off of sugar. There's no, there's, I mean, like you are down to like the bare necessities, oxygen, right? And I'm like, I've just a lot of money for this. And I can't believe people are paying for this. Anyway, so one day a group of them go, you know what? We got to get out of here. This is too much deprivation. We're going to go shopping. And I thought, okay, it's been five years. I bought nothing. I have clients. I'm making money. Today, I'm going to rub, rub the devil's nose in it. Because when I went through that crash and burn, the devil told me, you will never, so many times, he said, you will never speak again. You will never write again. You will never, you will never speak in churches. You will, you will never buy anything ever again for the rest of your life without looking at the price tag. You will never travel. You will never be respected. So many things the devil told me. And so I thought, well, I'm going to rub the devil's nose in it. I'm going to go shopping with this group. And whatever I see that I like, I'm going to take it to the register and I'm going to buy it. So we walked in, there was a cute little shoe store. I tried on some sandals, little flat sandals with, with Swarovski crystals. And I thought, I like it. I'm not even going to look at the price tag. I'm going to take it to the counter. And the girl said $600. I just about fell out. I was like, $600? <laughs> and then I bought it. And I still, have the, I still have those shoes to this day. That is the good thing. The good thing about the good thing about the bad thing. The good thing about the devil is that when he tells you stuff, he's a liar and he's the father of lies. So the opposite is true. So you can get happy. That's why you can rejoice in all your trials and tribulations. Yeah. The devil is a liar. <laughs>